Hey people, it is Tuesday, February the 15th. The time is 1.50 in the afternoon. And the temperature is currently minus 3 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> As I clear my throat, <laughs> minus 3 degrees Celsius. And I'm looking down at the Gardner Expressway from the pedestrian bridge near the foot of Roncesvalles Avenue. There you can see Humber Bay Shores off in the distance. That's part of Etobicoke. And in this direction is downtown Toronto, but you can't really see the skyline from here. But we're going to make our way over to Roncesvalles Avenue, which is just a stone's throw over in this direction. And then we're going to walk north along the length of Roncesvalles. And this area has been under construction for at least the last year or so. And it's not done yet, although there has been some significant progress made. I can see that Queen Street is open to traffic again. I think last time I came through here that was still closed to traffic. So here's where Queen Street West, King Street West, and Roncesvilles all sort of come together. And this is like the western boundary of the Parkdale neighborhood, which begins as you head eastward along Queen Street. And I've done some recent walks through Parkdale. But it had been a while since I walked along Roncesvalles, so I thought I'd come. And this time I'll be walking north along Roncesvalles. I think every other video I've done on Roncesvalles, I've been walking south from Dundas West Station. So this time I'll be walking north to Dundas West Station. Just to change things up a bit. One last look at Queen Street. And there's the neighborhood burrito boys. So this is a rather lengthy commercial strip here, running all the way up to Bloor Street. There are some sections that are residential and most of the commercial activity is confined to one side of the street, the east side of the street. It's not until you get closer to Bloor Street where there's commercial activity on both sides of the street. And this has traditionally been known as Little Poland. A lot of businesses cater to the Polish community. However, that's been sort of watered down over the years. It's not as Polish as it used to be. It's a very family-friendly neighborhood. I often jokingly refer to this as the dog-walking neighborhood because I see so many people out walking their dogs. Or I guess the dog walking district is how I refer to it. Yeah, 
And it's a very sought after neighborhood for families, as I mentioned, and the houses here run into the millions for a detached house. Many tree lined streets with century old homes. And they solidly built brick homes. And there are a number of these old pre-war apartment buildings as well. It's called the Aristocrat. Here you can see a map of the neighborhood. And there is a streetcar line, obviously. There are a number of popular restaurants along the strip as well. And a fair number of small scale supermarkets and fruit stands. And I used to spend quite a lot of time in this apartment building here. I had some friends who lived here back in the day before I lived in Toronto, I would come down to visit. So this is one of the first neighborhoods away from downtown that I familiarized myself with before I became a Toronto resident. this person go. And I decided I'd walk on this side of the street so I could actually get a good look at the commercial buildings on the other side. Of course, most of the pedestrian activity tends to be concentrated on the east side of the street where all the shops are. And I believe that's a former theater. It's now a convenience store. There is still an operating theater further up the street called the Review Cinema. And it's one of the oldest continually operating theaters in the city. It's an art house cinema now. And I can hear my boots squeaking on the sidewalk. It seems to be a phenomenon a phenomenon of late. <laughs> it 
St. Casimir's Roman Catholic Church. of Columbus. But like most Toronto neighborhoods, just because it's known as reflecting a certain ethnicity, in this case Polish, it doesn't mean there's not restaurants of every sort you can imagine in the neighborhood. Toronto is just like that. There's always going to be good Asian or Middle Eastern, Caribbean, Greek, you name it, Italian, on just about every commercial strip in the city. Whether it's Little Italy, Greek Town, Little India, Koreatown, doesn't seem to matter. There's one dog. I might have missed one before. I don't think dog walking season is in full swing. <laughs> Once the spring weather really kicks in, all the dog walkers come out of the woodwork. Here's the Toronto Public Library branch, the High Park branch. High Park way lies just a little bit to the west of here. The High Park neighborhood is just west of Roncesvalles. Mr. Kebab time. <laughs> and I think I've seen more fruit stands than anything else so far. There's also still a, still a fair number of these older corner stores and other businesses that have been here for decades. With their old school signage, which I rather like. Joe's Variety and Gift Center.
And it makes sense to have a store catering to dog owners here. We are in the dog walking district after all. And here's one of the more Polish oriented businesses here. Tron Chicago, I should say, is known for its large Polish community. But so is Toronto, so you could just easily have the word Toronto on that sign instead of Chicago. I suppose Chicago is a bit more known for its Polish community, though, if you really had to argue it. There's a look towards the High Park area. Most of the side streets here are full of these rather large detached houses. Heading west from downtown, this is the area where fully detached homes start to really predominate. Heading east from here, you'll find many more semi-detached homes and then row houses as you get closer to the core. Another nice old apartment building. Chocolateria. I was doing a live stream before I began this video and I walked past a chocolate factory and the entire area smelled of chocolate to such a degree that it was making me hungry. It looks like this old apartment building is getting a renovation. And now here's where the retail begins on the west side of the street. A 
she said boom that's a local record store I think they have more than one location around the city Either that or they just relocated because I know I've seen them on College Street before but perhaps they relocated to Roncesvalles. And then this is The Local which is a popular live music venue. And here's the cinema I was referring to earlier, the review. And they'll be fully back in action in two days when restrictions are lifted, allowing cinemas to go back to full capacity. They're currently limited to 50% or 500 people. So that's good news for all the local cinemas that have been hanging on by the skin of their teeth for the last two years. Loon's Pub, very Canadian. And here's a newer development here. There have been a couple of these low to mid-rise residential buildings that have popped up here on Roncesvalles. I don't think anything taller than six or eight floors would be permitted to directly front onto Roncesvalles itself though. More mid-rise development. Those tall buildings you see up ahead are not on Roncesvalles. They're on Dundas Street West. And I've always liked the look of these twin apartment buildings. Very solid, sturdy looking. And more fruits and vegetables. You can't forget your vegetables. I think this is a former bank building that's now a Starbucks. Okay. 
And here's where Dundas Street sort of merges with Roncesvilles for a brief block or so. And then after crossing Bloor Street, it continues on its way. Because Roncesvilles basically comes to an end right here. Because I believe north of here is marked as Dundas Street West. Although it really acts as a continuation of Roncesvalles Street. There's an old school bong store. Those used to be referred to as head shops. <laughs> Perhaps they still are. I don't know. I've never really been one to frequent those sorts of establishments. More dogs. I've always thought that this site with the Loblaws store and the LCBO was a bit out of place in the neighborhood with this giant sea of parking. But there are plans in the works to redevelop that entire parcel with a huge high, de high density development consisting of multiple towers that will fully urbanize the area. And you can see the CN Tower. It's the first time we've spotted that since I began the walk. <laughs> and we have some gigantic boxing gloves, Bloor Street Fitness. And this is derided as one of the ugliest buildings in the city. It's a strange mismatch of an apartment block on top of a ugly commercial block. And likewise, these buildings here, it's known as the crossroads is known as one of the worst apartment complexes to live in in the city. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but I remember hearing that was the general opinion five or more years ago. Maybe they've improved since then. There is a small shopping mall at the base of the apartment complex. Oh, this is Bloor Street West. And if you walk along Bloor Street heading east, it'll take you all the way through downtown.
There's a better look at the ugly building. And this building has been in limbo for years as well. There was a proposal to build a residential tower here, but it was opposed by the neighborhood and by the city planning department. And I think now there's a new proposal that has been accepted. That? It's a camera. <laughs> it's a little camera. What? Where'd you buy that? Best Buy. What? Best Buy. No, I need something like that. Yeah? Yeah, Best what Buy. What do you hook it to? Nothing. It just has a what built-in... What the fuck? How much is that? It's like 500 bucks. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This one probably is cheaper now because it's an older model, right? Wow. Yeah. So maybe 350 now for this it's one. It's got the fucking audio. Oh, yeah. It has everything. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It has everything. You gotta look. So Best Buy? Best Buy, yeah. It's called what? the Osmo Pocket. That's incredible, man. Yeah. Yeah. Osmo Pocket. Thanks, man. Cool. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. You could probably get a cheaper one, right? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> watch out. Well, watch out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, the guy almost like got ran over because he wasn't paying attention. And this person almost got ran over because he's not paying attention. <laughs> Two people almost got ran over in the space of 30 seconds because they weren't paying attention. So this is Dundas West Station here. So this is where I'm going to be wrapping up the video. Hope you enjoyed the walk. North along Roncesvalles Avenue, from the foot where it meets Queen and King Street, and northwards all the way up to Bloor Street. Ending here at Dundas West Station. Leave a comment below if you enjoyed the walk, and like and share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal and via my merch store. And you can also find me on Instagram under K Continuum. So thanks for watching and be sure to keep checking back because as always, I will continue.